it's quarter past six in the morning, uh, it's time to go. So just having breakfast, uh, washing out cups and stuff, cleaning teeth in here in a minute as well. Um, I had a terrible night's sleep, but that's to be expected in these kind of situations. The midges are out, there's no sunshine today. So I've got my net on, let's get some coffee. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you some coffee. I'm all right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the boys in my tent were up at about 5 a.m. this morning, so I laid in as long as I possibly could, uh, but basically just had to get up at about six. Right, I am all ready to go. I've got my dry bag packed, uh, and we're going to have kit check first, and then we're going to go over there and get tracker and get on our way and it's a straight up into a first climb and it looks like there's blue sky over there as well handed a dry bag in kit checked all done and uh, now time to get tracker and then we'll be on our way for 54k today see you later Have see ya thank you yeah right we're off 54k over the line we go and these are the look these little rf things here that's what clocks you as you go past so I'm now officially started so yeah I definitely feel like I went off a bit quick yesterday so we'll just take it nice and slowly at the start of today's run so we're leaving Glenfinnan I strode out of camp one with a plan I was going to start slowly and move up through the gears like the awe-inspiring Glenfinnan viaduct I would rise majestically with endurance and strength arching over adversity with ease What's your name? Yeah, Henry. Henry, nice to meet you, now, Henry. What's your name? Stephen. How are your legs? My legs are fantastic. Good. I'm going to run you ragged for the next hour. Oh, Never. God. Now, I should be walking for a little bit shortly. You can, you can, I'll let you run ahead after that. <laughs> no, we're looking forward to a good day. That was Henry, who would go on to complete the Cape Wrath Ultra, finishing second overall. The problem with plans is they have a nasty habit of coming unstuck. Having started the day with cloud cover and a coolness in the air, it wasn't long before the sun was out and I was shedding layers. It was going to be another hot day, but a beautiful one at that. 5k done, 37 minutes for the first 5k. We are climbing. The, the road is pretty good, so it's not really technical at the moment. So the, the, the flat sections and the down bits are runnable and then we're just hiking the little climbs but we're definitely gradually going up and I don't know why I didn't wear my sunglasses today because it looks like it's going to be another beautiful day just trying to take it a little bit easier this morning According to my watch, 10k done in one hour, 35 minutes. Um, big climb, and then we've had a bit of a gnarly downhill with some uh, bog and rocks and stuff, all good fun. <sighs> Feeling okay, but there's a very long way to go. Over a marathon still left, so just gotta keep it steady and make sure I drink and fill my water bottles up. That's one thing. But it's cool up here. Might warm up a bit when we get a bit further down. You're running a race, you know. We're in a race? This is, this, is a, this is a running race. We're supposed to be running, not stopping, taking photos of the beautiful scenery. So I could take pictures. Did you actually get off at seven? One minute past. Oh, okay, well done. He's chasing Mr. Forbes there in front of you. I um, I got out about quarter past seven, I think. What time did you make? Come round. <laughs> I just couldn't be asked to get out of bed. You lot up at five o'clock. Like it's all through 
I'm sick of laying here awake. Yeah, there is that, actually. So I might as well get up and get started and then I'm not rushed. I felt like I hadn't had any sleep, but then I looked at my watch and it said I've had six and a half hours. Is that one of those garments? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing though, all right? Yeah, yeah, all good, all yeah. good. Good. Uh, what are we, seven and a half miles into day, what, day two? Day two, yeah. So, about 25 miles to go. Walk in the park, mate. Oh, exactly. Marathon to go. <laughs> You've got 200 metres on him. Just keep pushing, you'll beat him. Oh, Crash him. <laughs> See you later, Steve. Keep it going. Have a good day. Yeah. I'll, I'll get the tent all prepared. You make sure you get a cup of coffee, please. <laughs> Latte. Yeah, flat white, please. Flat white, okay. Hey, how's it going? Here. You good? Yeah, yeah good. I'm doing well. Plugging along. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, Yeah, if you weren't paying attention, you could be in trouble there, couldn't you? Once through the bogs, down off the first climb and over the rickety River Peen Bridge, there was a good long section of forest track through Glendessery Wood, which made for an easy run to the start of the second climb. I felt like I was running well, despite it now being very warm. It was always an absolute joy to come across a fast flowing river and I regularly took full advantage. 20k in, just dumped myself in a nice load of cold water, filled my water bottles up in a stream. So that was good. Three hours and three minutes for 20k. So we have 34k to go, 34k left. Less than a marathon. It's good, isn't it? 22, 21 miles. Second big climb of the day coming up now. So poles will be out in a minute. Um, the sun is out, although we've been running through a lot of forest, which has been lovely because it's kept us cool. But I'm imagining this climb is going to be a bit exposed. We'll see. I'm feeling OK. Just need to keep plodding on forward, maintaining forward momentum, don't worry too much about pace. This is beautiful, isn't it? Look at this, fantastic. It feels really remote, you know, and quiet. Just gorgeous. Tough route down though, we're going through lots of bog and the rocks are very difficult to manoeuvre over. 27 kilometres, which is pretty much halfway. According to my watch, four hours, 21 minutes so far. We are climbing again. Probably still part of the second climb. We've had a rock strewn, boggy section by the river there, and now we're climbing up. It's worth remembering that whilst there are checkpoints on the Cape Wrath Ultra, there are no aid stations. So what you eat has to be either carried or purchased from local shops. And there really aren't many shops, local or otherwise, in the Scottish Highlands. Imagine signing up to a 50k ultra and the race director telling you there aren't any aid stations. That was the situation we found ourselves in every day for eight days straight on the Cape Wrath Ultra. Hi Barry. Hey Dan. Yeah, you doing all right? <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> yeah, only day two though. It is only day two. We're over halfway in though now. And, uh, this looks nice. It all looks nice. It, well, yeah, to be fair, it all looks nice. You won't be able to see them from here, but just over there, there's a group of deer. We can't make out what kind they are, but just walking by the water's edge. Absolutely lovely.
Oh, you're checkpoint two, are you? Hello, checkpoint two. Where's the lattes and the ice creams? The wilderness of Cape Wrath. No ice cream van. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks for being there. So that was checkpoint two. Uh, I need to fill my water bottles up by the stream because I am pretty much out of water now. So we'll get down there in a second, fill up. Good fast flowing water as well, so. Hello there. Hey, you're right. Ditch the warm water. And that's what you do when you come to a stream on a Cape Wrath Ultra. <laughs> Provided it's hot weather. Right, so we just get on now. I think there's a little bit of flat until we get to the final climb. 32K now in five hours, 18 minutes. Eight and a half, nine hours at least. Nine hours, I would say, to finish today. And it's time for my crisps. I've got some Marmite crisps to eat. So I'm very excited about that. It seems a shame to eat when it's such flat, runnable ground, though. Never mind. I think I ought to. I ought to eat. By now, I was beginning to struggle, but I tried to stay present in the environment, to take in my surroundings and be grateful that I was here, and to remember that I may well never be here again. Almost 38 kilometres in. Six hours, 32 minutes. Look. I'm in a valley and I am pretty much, oh, there's some people over there, but you know, I'm on my own and there's no wind, there's no rain, there's no baking hot sunshine. It's absolutely perfect. It's so beautiful. About 18, 18 kilometers to go, I think. This is what you live for, isn't it? This is what you do things, these things for. Because it's just awesome when you get to be in these places that you would never be otherwise. I mean, if you, even if you wanted to come here for like a hike for the day, it would take you ages to get here. You're not bringing the kids in the pushchair. Do you know what I mean? That's pretty incredible, isn't it? We were, uh, we were down there. It's been a long final climb. We've got 10 miles to go. At the start of the day, I had hoped my conservative approach to the early part of the run would see me running strong in the latter stages. And whilst I wasn't quite as fast as I wanted, things had been ticking over quite nicely. However, all that was about to change. My watch has just ticked over to 45 kilometres in 8 hours and 8 minutes. Now, I was hoping to get round this in about 9 hours, under 9 hours. But we've still got 10k to go, so that's not going to happen. So let's try and get as close time nine and a half or even 9.45, nine hours 45. Last year's winner, David Parrish, did this section, day two, in six hours, 43 minutes. This is madness. Joe Meek, the ladies winner last year, did it in eight and a half hours. Phenomenal running. Just really technical ground, a lot of it. But it's, uh, it's pretty flat now for the remainder, but it is apparently quite technical, quite rocky and very muddy and boggy. So it's gonna be a slow final 10K. This isn't too bad, this track I'm on now. But in a minute when we get by the water, yeah, I think it gets bad. One final checkpoint to hit just along here. 
We're well in time for cut off, so we're not worried about that. Not today. So I've just hit 6K to go and nine hours on the clock. So currently I'm doing 10 minute kilometers. So actually it's gonna take me another hour to get in. So it's gonna be just before 10 hours that we finish this. This has been a tough slog. Uh, not easy ground to cover. And we've still got 80, 90 meters of elevation to do. So there's still one more climb left. This last section has broken my spirit a bit. I thought we'd done all the climbing and then we had another hill. And it just, I gave up. I was hoping to get in under 10 hours. That's not gonna happen now. Originally, I was hoping to get in under nine hours. Anyway, we're nearly there. Two and a half K to go. Well, that has been hard work. Didn't expect it to be that tough. We're coming in in 10 hours and about 22 minutes. I'd gone out hard on day one and I'd gone out easy on day two. And the Cape Wrath Ultra had thrown both plans right back in my face. What on earth was I going to do on day three? Hi there. Okay, into the finish. And we're done. Hey, Stephen. That was hard work. Oh. Well, if it was oh, easy, you'd ask for your money well back. Well done, Stephen. Coming up in episode four of the Cape Wrath Ultra. My legs are sore today. Both of us are a little bit worried about the cutoffs already, aren't we? 15 kilometers done. Ooh. When I'm climbing, every kilometer is under 15 minutes. Because if it's not, that is almost game over. I have to say I'm suffering quite a low period. I can't do this. I don't want to do it. I can't do it. It's too hard. But whether I go out tomorrow, I seriously doubt at the moment. Yeah.